SpaceX has been making regular upgrades to the Starship as they rush to get the craft ready for its first ever orbital flight. The shape and size of the Starship have evolved drastically since it was first unveiled, and now a new design seems to be the most promising one yet. Let's take a closer look at this magnificent feat of engineering and how it will redefine space exploration. Starship and Super Heavy are the biggest, most important pieces of Elon Musk's grand plan for SpaceX. Musk has repeatedly stressed that he founded SpaceX back in 2002 primarily to help humanity colonize Mars. SpaceX is now actively trying to turn this sci-fi dream into reality. The company is developing a 100-passenger spaceship called Starship and a giant rocket known as Super Heavy, which together constitute the transportation system that Musk thinks will bring Mars settlement within reach at long last. The Starship is powered by a cluster of Raptor engines, which are some of the most powerful engines ever built. The engines use a combination of liquid methane and liquid oxygen as the propellant, which provides a high-performance and reliable source of propulsion. The use of liquid methane also makes the engines environmentally friendly, reducing the carbon footprint of space travel. With the development of the Starship, SpaceX has opened up a new world of possibilities for space travel. The Starship has the potential to make deep space missions more accessible and affordable, paving the way for the colonization of other planets. The future of space travel is bright, and the Starship is at the forefront of this new era. With its powerful engines, efficient fuel system, and revolutionary landing system, the Starship is set to revolutionize the way we explore the final frontier. Whether it's a mission to the moon, Mars, or beyond, the Starship is ready to take us there. Over the last few months, SpaceX has made several incredible upgrades to the Starship as it inches closer to an orbital test flight. Perhaps the most important update was to the Raptor engines. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow stage combustion cycle engine that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. The number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The Starship currently hosts six total engines, three vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and three sea-level gimbling engines. As research and development continue on the Starship, the latest news from SpaceX is that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone a static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy prototype, Booster 7, marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity, in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA for the first orbital test flight of Starship. Apart from upgrades to the Raptor engine, SpaceX has also made massive improvements to the Starship's booster. Once optimized, SpaceX says that Starship can launch up to 150 tons to low Earth orbit while still recovering the orbital ship and suborbital booster for reuse. CEO Elon Musk has stated that Starship reuse will eventually take hours, enabling multiple flights per day for each ship and booster, and dropping the marginal cost of each launch to just a few million dollars. In comparison, SpaceX's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket uses simpler Merlin 1D engines, has just 10 of those engines to Starship's 39 Raptors, produces about 10 times less thrust at liftoff, and can launch about 11% as much payload to orbit while expanding its upper stage. Even then, Musk reported in mid-2020 that the marginal cost of a Falcon 9 launch was $15 million, impressively low but still a vivid demonstration of just how far Starship has to go. 
Simply ensuring that Starship can reach orbit at all is a major challenge. Successfully recovering Starship and Super Heavy after the fact may be an even bigger challenge and cannot be fully demonstrated until the rocket can consistently reach orbit. SpaceX won't be able to reuse Starship until it can consistently recover ships and boosters from orbital launches. And there's no guarantee that early prototypes will be reusable, even if they're recovered. Until reusability is demonstrated, every Starship upper stage will be functionally expendable whether or not Elon Musk wants it to be. Musk likely means that SpaceX may or may not decide to develop a Starship upper stage custom built for expendable missions. Such a stage would likely take Starship, remove everything extraneous, and reduce its mass as much as possible. Musk has proposed something similar before, noting that SpaceX could develop a lightened version of Starship with no heat shield or fins or legs for expendable interplanetary launches. Further to the contrary, SpaceX's Starbase factory is already building multiple intentionally expendable Starships. Ship 26 and Ship 27 feature no thermal protection, have no heat shield tiles, and will not be fitted with flaps, making them impossible to recover or reuse. More likely than not, they will be used to test other crucial Starship technologies like orbital refilling and cryogenic fluid management. Meanwhile, SpaceX's multi-billion dollar contract to use Starship to return NASA astronauts to the moon revolves around a depot ship variant that will store propellant in orbit and cannot return to Earth. The first few Starship moon landers may also be functionally expendable and only used for one astronaut landing apiece. In short, SpaceX already has extensive plans to build variants of Starship that are either fully expendable or can only be reused in orbit. In early 2023, SpaceX revealed that an expendable version of the rocket will be able to launch up to 250 metric tons to low Earth orbit in a single launch. Saturn V, the next most capable expendable rocket, could launch up to 118 tons to LEO and cost $1 to $2 billion per launch. SpaceX publicly advertising the expendable performance of Starship unsurprisingly confirms that the company is considering all the capabilities its new launch system will offer. And Starship's expendable capabilities are significant. Constructed piece by piece over dozens of launches, the International Space Station weighs about 420 tons. Two expendable Starships could launch more usable mass to low Earth orbit. Truly revolutionary if SpaceX can make Starship launches frequent and routine. As the Starship edges ever closer to the orbital test, SpaceX has just conducted its most ambitious and powerful test to date with its Starship Mars rocket. The company ignited 33 Raptor engines on Booster 7, a prototype of Starship's first stage Super Heavy rocket, during a static fire test at Starbase, the company's South Texas facility. Static fires are common pre-flight trials in which a rocket's engines are briefly ignited while the vehicle stays anchored to the ground. And SpaceX is gearing up for a flight with Starship. The program's first orbital test mission, which apparently will involve Booster 7 and an upper stage prototype known as Ship 24. That landmark flight could launch before the end of the year. This static fire could be a big step toward the orbital liftoff. It doubled the previous highest number of Raptor engines that SpaceX had ignited during a Starship engine test. But there's still considerable work to do to demonstrate Booster 7's flight readiness. The vehicle boasts a whopping 33 Raptors. SpaceX is developing Starship to take people and cargo to the Moon and Mars, as well as perform a variety of other spaceflight tasks. Starship prototypes have flown a handful of test flights to date, but none of them have gotten higher than about six miles in the sky, and none of them have involved a super heavy vehicle. SpaceX had already linked a number of customers to Starship, including some private customers that have also signed up to ride Starship on missions around the moon. Billionaire Yusaku Meizawa booked an entire flight, for example, and space tourism pioneer Dennis Tito and his wife Akiko bought two seats on a different mission. While space tourism is expected to be a big part of the Starship's future, the craft is needed for several groundbreaking scientific missions. The first of these is the Artemis mission, which aims to land humans on the moon for the first time since the conclusion of the Apollo program. The plan is to accomplish this by the end of the decade. After a successful splashdown of the Orion spacecraft in the Pacific Ocean, NASA Administrator and former Senator Bill Nelson shared that his agency plans to go to Mars by the end of 2030. Senator Nelson struck an upbeat tone after NASA had a great Artemis I mission, and the remarks were made during a post-splashdown press conference in which he also shared details for SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. 
The event was attended by several agency officials, including Michael Serafin, NASA's Artemis I mission manager, who shared his final thoughts on Orion's performance as it entered the Earth at breakneck speeds for a successful landing. Throughout its journey to the moon and back, Orion performed better than NASA engineers had initially expected. The spacecraft's power generation, done through solar panels, generated more power than expected. As part of the mission, NASA added additional test objectives to stress the vehicle and learn more about its performance for future missions. The next Artemis mission will involve a crew, and not only will NASA use the data for the next mission, but it will also make changes to the ship. Administrator Nelson also shared crucial details about SpaceX's Starship Lunar Lander. This is currently the only vehicle that has been chosen by NASA to land humans on the moon as part of the Artemis program. He announced that SpaceX plans to do an uncrewed landing in 2023 and then do the crewed landing in late 2024. While delays are possible due to the Starship being a brand new concept, all signs point towards the craft being ready in time. If you like this video, you may also be interested in this one, which talks about SpaceX's new 33-engine static fire test on the latest Starship prototype. Do you think the Starship will have its orbital test flight this year? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.